Matthew Lewis, and today I'm here with Koya Whitehead Artoka, who is a founding member of the First Nation Two Spirit Collective. Thank you for being here with us today. <clears throat> like you said, I was one of the founding members of the uh, First Nations Two Spirit Collective, and we did a lot of work uh, to try to broaden and uh, the understanding of Native people within the larger LGBTQ community and the importance of uh, the issues facing the Native community, specifically regarding uh, issues like sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Um, and violence, and try to highlight and uh, kind of help people understand the ways that those issues overlap with queer community. Um, because, you know, as queer people of color and queer community, um, <clears throat> a lot of times our issues are more than just marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, we kind of come, we're walking in a lot of different worlds at various times. And so, how do you kind of help to create a more inclusive queer movement? that can sort of be expansive enough to hold all of its members, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yep. Um, and uh, the film Two Spirits is actually, I think it's really a kind of a groundbreaking, one of the most important films to come out in a while. Uh, it's one of the first films that has uh, put the experience of Two Spirit people in the front, front forefront and center. Mm -hmm. um, and it highlights the story of Fred Martinez, uh, who is a young Native man who was uh, murdered for being Native and queer. And for also, uh, I think we would call him maybe transgender. I don't know that he calls himself that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he was living kind of in, in ways that cross gender, uh, gender norms. And I think that also created risks for him. So can you give us a little bit of background on the Two-Spirit identity? So the, the term Two-Spirit itself is actually more of a... I liken it a lot to the, to the word queer. Mm -hmm. So how queer has kind of become an umbrella term to hold a, like all of the identities mm -hmm. that are within the queer community, right? Um, <clears throat> even though it was historically like a pejorative, and, you know. Um, I think it's been really interesting to see the way that has evolved over the last 20 years. But the term two-spirit itself is really similar. It's a pan, it's sort of a pan term, okay. like a pan-native term. Um, you know, because in the United States there are like 560 some tribes. So for us to be able to have to name every one of those tribes the names that they call themselves, <laughs> you know, like that's just a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's a lot. So two-spirit is, you know, a nice little term. Um, it, historically, it came into maybe more popular use about 20 years ago. Um, and it was pretty intentional. It was uh, during an international two-spirit gathering that they were trying to figure out what, uh, kind of confronting that issue of so many tribes and so many identities within those tribes. How do you talk about this experience of what it means to be um, queer, but in that way that is more akin to your own experience in your own community, similar to, I think, sometimes like in the African American community, folks will use the term same gender loving, mm -hmm. right? So that's something that, because we don't necessarily always identify with a white queer community or their agenda or whatever they're doing, or their experience, um, <clears throat> it's one way to sort of put, uh, provide a home for your people and to provide a way for them to identify themselves mm -hmm. uh, to outside those outside their community to those inside their community. So it is based in uh, the culture of one tribe that had. Uh, the belief or the the sort of understanding within their tribe that part of why somebody would love somebody else of the same gender was because they had within them the, the male and female spirits. So that within them were the two spirits. And that allowed that allowed people to understand why they could love somebody else who was of the same gender. So what are some of the major issues um, that the two spirit community faces? The the issues that the two spirit community face are a lot of the same issues that Native people face across the board. So there's a lot of issues around, um, you know, homelessness, violence, alcohol, drug addiction, uh, poverty. Uh, so there's a, there's a good amount of overlap, right, in mm -hmm. just the general Native experience. Um, but, you know, even being queer, it's not like you can't say there are homeless queer people or, you know, home, or queer people are facing the same issues around violence or... So there's a lot of natural overlaps in terms of the struggle. Um, but I feel like for, you know, Native people, I think what makes us different and what makes us unique um, is that in addition to those overlapping kind of struggles, 
there that we are also <clears throat> we hold a different kind of relationship to the United States government. It's a nation to nation relationship. So one of the I think for me and what I would say is that one of the defining and unique issues to us is an issue of sovereignty mm -hmm. and how <clears throat> as tribal people we continue to uphold our and uh, protect our native lands and uh, how and our relationship with the U.S. government. So for that, in that terms, uh, our, you know, our experience is very different from uh, other queer people of color and other queer people, um, and just people of color in general, because we do have that unique aspect to our identity and our community. So. The W. Madison campus, mm -hmm. uh, the Crossroads Initiative was recently put into place, and I'm involved with that, and that's been really good you know, to create um, a space specifically for queer people of color. Mm. Now, like, what? How do we, you know, create a model for a two spirit orb on our campus? Mm. It's really important to do my own political education, mm -hmm. and so that, like, if I want to be an ally to uh, African Americans, then I need to understand the history of African Americans, you know, in the U.S. If I want to be uh, an ally to LGBTQ African Americans, then I need to understand the history of LGBT, Black LGBTQ people in uh, in America, and so part of that is like you know knowing about Harris's burning, knowing mm -hmm. about uh, um, you know folks like Sylvia Rivera and you know the folks who are sort of um, Miss Major, Miss Major Gertie Gracie, right, mm -hmm. who was one of the folks who was at Stonewall. So I think that part of what is really key and important when we talk about not just supporting one another but being in solidarity with one another mm -hmm. it is that it's not, you know, to be, is, is to know the history of those communities that you want to be involved with or support or in solidarity with um, and to, to show up. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that I have learned over time is that one, I need to be I need to be accountable for understanding the issues that those communities are facing. Um, and that two, that uh, nothing, uh, there is nothing that can take the place of actually just physically showing up. So if it's a rally, if it's a whatever, like whenever somebody asks you to come in support, to show up. Um, even if you're not always the most prepared, but you know, I think there, there can't be enough set for just physically being there. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So, that is this idea of self-education, I mean, could that also transfer to universities like ours making, acknowledging the existence of, you know, queer people of color and, mm. and two-spirit people and the actual curriculum, mm. you know, is, is, that a, is that also a need that we face in our society? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the poster behind you. You know, like, that is a prime example, is that all too often the histories of, you know, and I think as, as the white queer community understands this on some level, I think as queer people of color we experience this um, more intensely. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that uh, I don't want to get into a sort of stacking of oppressions. I think that's dangerous. But what I can say is that I think that, um, you know, our struggles as people of color have largely been erased. And within that, our struggles as queer people of color have also been uh, largely erased. You know, part of what we need to be conscious of, and that's part of our political education, is to know those kinds of histories of, of our people and to say them again and again and again, mm -hmm. which is part of why I'm here. Because I mean, you know, um, we need to talk about Fred Martinez. We need to tell his story and people need to hear his name. And because his, and I think it's really significant that, you know, Fred Martinez died a very similar death to Matthew Shepard, very similar, similar circumstances. But he is a poor native kid, you know, in the Four Corners area. So still, like, in the same area that Matthew Shepard died, mm -hmm. the same geographic region, and nobody knew his story. He did not get the kind of attention that Matthew Shepard got, and and it took these filmmakers, you know, just relentlessly and, and tirelessly, um, telling his story. And I think that you will see that in the film as well. That one of the folks in the film talks about talks about that difference in the attention that was paid. 
So I feel like this too is part of our part of what it means to do political education is to is to know this story, you know. So I feel like um, for me that's the that's the important reason to be here is is to amplify it, um, to make it known, to say that it's important, mm -hmm. to use whatever cachet I may have to bring attention to it um, because it is a story of my people, you know. It's a story of two spirit people. I think there's a way where you know we're kind of we have to be vigilant about the issues that our communities are facing because it is life or death right now. You know, our people are being killed. And so as long as that continues to happen, then we have to continue to be a voice raising attention to that issue and, and pointing to it and, and bringing it to the forefront anytime that we can. Um, and not just that issue of violence, but also you know the other issues that our people are facing around like, alcohol or drug addiction, homelessness, you know, poverty. Like our people have a lot of overlapping issues that are not, um, what's the word, that are not specific to one community. I think as queer people of color, it, it's, it's really important that we continue to uh, bring our people's story forward and, and to highlight them when we can. Well, thank you very much for being here with us and sharing your words and your story. I, I really appreciate it. Um, do you have any final statements before we go <laughs> sign off? No, no, I really appreciate the invitation. I appreciate being here. Um, I think the only thing is, you know, again, I go back to time and time again, it's really important to take personal responsibility for your own political education. I can't emphasize that enough, that like, um, to, to constantly be questioning and to learning more because we know that there are so many things that are not being talked about. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much again. Yeah, thank you.